Hello guys, welcome to the chemistry lesson. This is the chemistry lesson 9. So in today's lesson, we'll be looking at the organic chemistry. So we will be looking at organic chemistry. What is organic chemistry? Well, organic chemistry is the branch of chemistry which deals with the study of organic compounds. What are organic compounds? We are saying organic compounds are carbon compounds other than oxides of carbon or carbonates. So you understand that carbon contains carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbonates. However, these are not organic compounds. The rest are organic compounds. Some organic compounds are carbon compounds other than oxides of carbon or carbonates. So the element carbon is the center of organic chemistry because carbon has the ability to bond with itself and other atoms to form long chains. So carbon is the center of organic chemistry and the reason is that because Carbon has the ability to bond with itself and other atoms to form long chains. All right, so we are saying the ability of carbon to form long chains is called catenation. So that ability of carbon to bond and form long chains is called catenation. All right, so we are saying carbon has four valence electrons which gives it the ability to form four bonds with other atoms and itself so carbon has four valence electrons meaning four electrons in its outermost shell and it is these electrons that gives uh, carbon the ability to form four bonds with it itself or other atoms meaning it can bond with other four atoms of itself or of its type, like other carbon atoms, or it can bond with other carbon, I mean other atoms of other elements so that it becomes stable. All right, so let's push this up a bit. So what we are saying is this. Let's say we have carbon here on the periodic table represented as shown. Here we have six, which means the atomic number of carbon is a six, and that means the number of electrons. So it means carbon has six electrons, and then this is 12, the mass number or yeah, of carbon. Now, if we were to write these electrons, six electrons of carbon in its outermost shell, let's start with the symbol of carbon, which is, is C, we said in bonding that the first shell should have two electrons. And then since we put two electrons in the first shell, then in six, we are going to remain with four. So four electrons goes in the other shell, which is the last shell. So I have one, one here, one here, one here. So it is these electrons that gives carbon the ability to bond with other four atoms in order to become stable, all right? Or to bond with itself. So now carbon has got that. So let's say we ignore the inside shell here. And then when we ignore the inside shell, let's represent these bonds with the structures like this so let's say this one can form a bond and let's say it will form a bond like that and this one can form a bond and this one can form a bond and this one can form a bond so it means carbon is able to join with other atoms then to form very long chains and that is what causes carbon to be the center of organic chemistry, right? So let's say 
uh, we push this one here. So let's say carbon here now is to bond with the, let's say, hydrogen, all right? Let's say we have hydrogen here, and then we want to see how carbon can bond with the hydrogen. So this is hydrogen, uh, and that's how it is represented on the periodic table. It has one atomic number and one mass number, which means that it has one electron. If it has one mass number, then it means it does not have uh, a neutron. It only has a proton, right? So, so now, what we are saying is this, that the configuration of um, a hydrogen, the electronic structure of hydrogen atom can be like this. So it will have just one shell with one electron. So now, if hydrogen is to bond with the carbon, so for carbon to be stable, it needs uh, eight more electrons. So bonding, uh, carbon bonding with the hydrogen, it will uh, involve itself in what we call sharing of electrons. So it will need to share this electron with one hydrogen. And for this hydrogen also to become stable, it has to share its electron with the carbon because this first shell for it to be stable, it requires one more electron and that one more electron can come from the carbon atom. So since carbon atoms needs four, it means it will need four hydrogen atoms, each providing or sharing one electron that it has in its shell. So let's say we have now uh, four more hydrogen atoms here. So let's see how they can bond because they would share in order to uh, form a stable uh, configuration. So what we are saying here is that uh, uh, this one now can bond. How do they bond by sharing? So they would do share electrons like that. So when they share electrons like that, they become stable because here hydrogen contributes this electron and this carbon contributes this electron. And here hydrogen contributes this electron, this carbon contributes this electron. And also here hydrogen contributes this and carbon contributes this. And here hydrogen contributes this, carbon contributes this. So if you count the outermost shell for a carbon here, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it will be stable. And then if you count for each atom of hydrogen, also you will discover that its uh, outermost shell or its shell will be stable because it will have now one, two, and this one will have one, two, this one, one, two, this one, one, two. So the first shell, as far as it is concerned in acquiring the uh, st stability, uh, it is now stable, all right? So now this one can be represented as shown. So let's say we have uh, carbon in the center. So you see carbon now becomes the center, just as we said, carbon is the center of organic. So now as it becomes the center, this bond here, a paired share of electron, which contains two electrons, is represented by a line like this. And then uh, let's say we have hydrogen here. And then this one also paired share of electron, which consists of two electrons also represented by a line. And then we have hydrogen and this pair also line hydrogen, this pair also one hydrogen. So now this is what usually we encounter in organic chemistry, all right? So this is what we usually encounter in organic chemistry and then this uh, is called a structural formula which we can also write in this form let me just show how you can write this so since here you have one hydrogen you can write i mean one carbon you can write one carbon like this and then you have a four hydrogen which you can write four hydrogen like this all right so this is organic chemistry. So this one is called a, 
molecular formula and this one is called a displayed structural formula all right so now let's say now carbon is to bond with itself so we have shown how carbon can bond with it with other uh, atoms and then forming how many bonds for so there are four bonds here one two three four all right so this is what uh, causes carbon to have that ability now let's say we have now uh, this carbon here and another carbon so these two also can still bond together because we've said that uh, the ability of carbon to bond with itself and other atoms to form long chains so we said the element carbon is the center of organic chemistry because carbon has the ability to bond with itself and other atoms to form long chains so let's see how it can bond with itself here so we have two carbon atoms here so let's orient electrons so that they face each other properly so these electrons will orient themselves like this and then there will be bonding of sharing so you see carbon can bond with itself like this and when it bonds with itself like this it's not stable so here it's not stable so in this case if it is not stable like this then it will need maybe other atoms also to come to join it and become stable so in this case we can have hydrogen so why am i saying it's not stable if we were to count this shell here how many electrons it has we can say it has one two three four five six so it needs two more so since these are already sharing so these will also need to share and these will need to share so now let's say how many do they need to share in this one we need one two three four so let's say now it bonds with hydrogen how many four of them so these four hydrogen now can also bond one will come here another one here another one here another one here as is shown right so now let's push this one a bit here so what we are saying here is that these two can be represented in a displayed structural form as shown so this carbon here bonded with another carbon so this uh, two paired shares are shared uh, two yeah we have two pair two paired shared or full electrons or two pair of full electrons that are shared all right so these can be represented by two line here like this one which means this is a double bond here and then we have another carbon so this one are sharing a two pair of full electrons so sharing two pair of electrons here we have one pair one pair is called a double bond and then this one here it's a single bond where they are sharing one pair of electron between carbon and hydrogen which we can represent by just a single line and then we put hydrogen equally here single line hydrogen equally here single line hydrogen equally here single line hydrogen so you have seen carbon has the ability to bond with it itself sometimes it can bond it can have single bond so if it has a single bond like this carbon with another carbon here meaning they have shared one pair of full electrons all right so now if they have shared one pair of electrons so meaning the outermost shell here it only has one two for this one it has only one two but it will also need to share again like here like here like here so it can have maybe it can even put hydrogen here another hydrogen here another hydrogen here another hydrogen here okay like that and like that so you see another form in which it can bond so here it is also stable 
because here there will be a pair the share of electron meaning there will be two electrons as far as this carbon atom is concerned it will have one two three four five six seven eight even in this one it will have one two three four five six seven eight all right so it will be stable as well so even here carbon is stable because now here it will have one two three four five six seven eight even in this one, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So notice that uh, each carbon is always uh, surrounded with the four bonds for it to be stable. That's why we said because carbon has the ability to form four bonds. All right. So that's why carbon is the center of organic chemistry. So this one has how many bonds? One, two, three, four. Equally, this one has one, two, three, four. All right. So this gives uh, carbon the ability to join with itself and other uh, atoms and then form long chains and then form those compounds we call carbon or organic compounds. All right. So let's say we pick the first one which it formed. The other one here, this one which we showed where carbon had to bond with the uh, uh, hydrogen atoms. And then this one also where hydrogen has had to bond with the itself and then I mean carbon with itself and also with the hydrogen. So we are saying such uh, compounds like this one which contains carbon and hydrogen and here carbon and hydrogen. We call them hydrocarbons. All right. So in organic chemistry, we study also hydrocarbons. And what are hydrocarbons? We are saying uh, we define hydrocarbons as organic compounds consisting of carbon and the hydrogen atoms only. So hydrocarbons are organic compounds consisting of carbon and hydrogen atoms only. So you need to know this definition because it also comes in the examination. All right. So you see here we have only carbon and hydrogen, even here carbon and the hydrogen. All right. So we are saying there are two types of hydrocarbons. Namely, we have what we call saturated hydrocarbons and what we call unsaturated hydrocarbons. So what are unsaturated or what are saturated hydrocarbons? So we are saying saturated hydrocarbons contains single bonds between carbon atoms or rather saturated hydrocarbons are hydrocarbons that contains single bonds between carbon atoms. So those which will contain single bonds between carbon atoms like let me say if I have another one like the one I showed like this one carbon then I did like this. This is H and another H here. This two is H. Then let's say another H here. Another H here. Then another H here. So notice that between this carbon and this carbon in between there's a single bond so such organic compounds or such hydrocarbons that are contain the single bonds between carbon atoms single bond between carbon atoms such uh, hydrocarbons we call them saturated hydrocarbons all right so like this one is a saturated hydrocarbons but this one it's not because it contains a double bond between two carbon atoms all right all right by saturated it means that every outermost electron in carbon atoms is bonded to hydrogen atoms so in here like here so this one is a saturated hydrocarbon and what we mean by saturated hydrocarbon we said those hydrocarbons that contain single bonds uh, between carbon atoms and that uh, 
we are saying by saturated it means that all the electrons in the outermost shell of the carbon are bonded to hydrogen atom like here all the outermost electrons in this carbon are all bonded to hydrogen atom but when you check in this one here in this one the, the there is a bond here which means that uh, it's not all the valence electrons in this for instance carbon have been bonded to hydrogen uh, atom only one two here have been bonded and in this one only two but here all the four one two three four because i'm counting all the four because the uh, carbon here contributed one hydrogen even here one hydrogen even here one hydrogen even sorry it contributed one electron even here one electron even here one electron even here one electron so all the electrons in carbon are bonded to hydrogen but in this one uh, carbon here contributed one electron to hydrogen and here one electron to hydrogen so the other two it contributed to the other carbon here equally this one contributed one electron to uh, hydrogen even here one electron to hydrogen here but here it only contributed two to the other carbon so not all the valence electrons here have been contributed or bonded to hydrogen but here they have been bonded to hydrogen and this hence we are saying by saturated it means that every outermost electron in carbon atoms is bonded to hydrogen <coughs> atoms all right so yes you also need to know the definition of saturated hydrocarbons we are saying saturated hydrocarbons are hydrocarbons that contains single bonds between carbon atoms so let's look at unsaturated hydrocarbons so before we look at that we are saying examples of hydrocarbons or saturated hydrocarbons are alkenes so examples of saturated hydrocarbons are alkenes all right so for instance this one is uh, an alkene all right so let's look at now saturated hydrocarbons all right so we are saying unsaturated hydrocarbons contain double bonds between carbon atoms now you have heard that unsaturated hydrocarbons are actually hydrocarbons that contains double bonds between carbon atoms so like this one it is now called a saturated uh, i mean an unsaturated hydrocarbon because it contains a double bond between carbon atoms all right so we are saying by unsaturated it means that not every outer most electron in carbon atoms is bonded to hydrogen atoms so by unsaturated we mean that not every outermost um, electron in carbon is bonded to hydrogen atom all right so examples of unsaturated hydrocarbons are alkenes alkenes so alkenes are examples of uh, unsaturated hydrocarbon so this one is an alkene and this one we have said it is an alkene now let's say we remain with this one here now let's say this hydrogen is replaced all right let's replace this hydrogen with o and h let's say here we have oh, instead of hydrogen we have oh like this oh all right so we have replaced that hydrogen here with what oh so now this one we have formed here is called an alcohol so we have formed an alcohol so this part here which we have added oh here we call it the uh, hydroxyl group so this one is called the hydroxyl group and how do we define an alcohol we define an alcohol as uh, alcohols are organic compounds formed when one hydrogen atom in an 
alkene is replaced with a hydroxyl group this one here so you saw it was we had h here now h was replaced by oh so since it was replaced by oh then it becomes an alcohol because when it had h this one was an alkene now we replaced the oh i mean the h with oh then this one became an alcohol that's why we are saying alcohols are organic compounds formed when one hydrogen atom in an alkane is replaced with a hydroxyl group so this hydroxyl group is also written as this all right so now let's say instead of having this one right then we have um, a different one like this one here instead of having uh, i mean this one now we have uh, this one so this one is called what is called the carboxyl group and then this whole thing which is formed which contains this part this one you memorize the c o o h this part called the uh, carboxyl the uh, hydrocarbon which contains this is called the uh, this one actually is not a hydrocarbon i mean so an organic compound which contains this <clears throat> the whole of this one now is called the carboxylic acid so this one is a carboxylic acid so these ones are carboxylic acids also called alkanoic uh, acid alkanoic acid acids all right so let's define what alkanoic acids are or carboxylic acids are we are saying carboxylic acids are organic compounds formed when one hydrogen atom in an alkene is replaced by a uh, carboxyl group all right so carboxylic acids are organic acids now we are saying that carboxylic acids are organic compounds formed when one hydrogen atom in an alkene is replaced by a carboxyl group so <clears throat> here remember in an alkene that we showed first there was h now if we remove h we put this one the carboxyl group then we form a carboxylic acid all right so carboxylic acids are organic compounds formed when one hydrogen atom in an alkene is replaced by a carboxyl group so let's move a bit and look at this one as a carboxylic acid let's say we bring another substance this one called an alcohol the one we looked at the area which has oh so we are saying oh here this bond can also be ignored and then we can still write this one as like this so it is still the same either like this or like this it is still the same <clears throat> now um, yeah so let's say um we turn this one here this one turns this way all right so let's say this one turns this way and then yeah that way and then after it turns that way now um let's say uh, this reacts we say plus this one now reacts with this so a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol like this so when it reacts with an alcohol like this then an alcohol where uh, an alcohol only donates hydrogen then this one donates um, uh, what the hydroxyl here then such a reaction now uh, when this one is donated they break out these say this one are going to come out so they come out oh and h they will form water so they come out like that then they will join these ones here and then these ones then they come and join each other this one comes to join there like that right so now when they join there and then form this one as water like that 
So this one is a new substance they have formed, all right? So let's see this, which they have formed here, this one. This one that have formed here is actually an Easter link, and this compound itself is called an Easter, all right? So this one, the whole of this compound is called an Easter. And what are Easter's? We are saying that Easter's are organic compounds formed by the reaction of alcohols with the carboxylic acids. So this one we are calling it as an ester link. So carboxylic acid will have this symbol here as the, I mean ester's will have this symbol here as the, an ester link. All right, so now we are ending here as part of introduction to organic chemistry. Now, we are also going to look at um, um, general properties of organic chemistry. And then for online lessons, guys, you can contact me on my WhatsApp line here for online lessons. All right. So uh, we are going to look at uh, general properties of organic compounds. So we are going to say number one that organic compounds do not conduct electricity. The number two, organic compounds have low boiling and melting points. And then number three, organic compounds are insoluble in water, but soluble in organic solvents like ethanol, acetate, etc. So here, let me explain because these two are simple, but here, uh, um, organic compounds, let's say an example of an organic compound is fats. So fats, do not dissolve in water. They do not dissolve in water, but they do dissolve in organic solvents. All right, so such as ethanol, even acetate. Then another property is that um, organic compounds are generally volatile and flammable, meaning they are volatile, they can evaporate, so and also they are flammable. Right, so they are volatile and they are flammable. And then, meaning by volatile here, we mean they easily evaporate like the way petrol is. When you leave it open, petrol is able to evaporate and then uh, remain, the container remains empty. And flammable means they easily catch a flame. So in the similar manner, petrol is, is flammable because it catches a flame easily. All right, so we are saying, again, that most organic compounds burn in, uh, in oxygen, giving energy, water, and the carbon dioxide. So organic compounds can burn or undergo combustion to form or to give energy and then form water and the carbon dioxide. All right, so this has been an introduction to organic chemistry so i hope you have enjoyed this lesson now if you haven't yet joined my online lesson you haven't yet joined my online lessons so this is an opportunity for you to join because you'll be missing out a lot because next we'll be looking at functional groups and homologous series and this is very very important for you to understand but as for now uh, bye and see you in my next lesson. Peace.